Good morning. We're doing a morning episode. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Energy's high. Uh, <laughs> we got me, Chris Redding. Also on the line, we got Sam Draper. Say hello. Hey! Woo! And also, we got Mr. Love Horror himself. It's Alex. <laughs> Hell yeah! Don't get a surname again. You've done it again. You've yeah, but oh, sorry. I thought I was going by your love horror sort of handle. That you know, nice. you know by that, aren't you? That's good. Yeah, isn't that zombie one anyway? Yeah, well, zombie two actually. (laughs) Someone got zombie one bastard. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Someone. No, it was my friend took that. That's fine. (laughs) He knew you were going to do it and just absolutely yeah. Mm. Beat you to it. Yeah. Okay. He said, "We'll do. We'll we'll both be called zombie. I'll be." And then he went away and goes, "I just need to go check my email." Uh, yeah, registered. <laughs> uh, grr, I'll get you for that, Tom. Anyway. Probably doesn't even use it, does he? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we are here. We're recording on a morning. Uh, what morning is it? Tuesday. Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. What a morning. Um, today, we're going to talk about uh, The Abyss by James Cameron. This was released in 1989. Um, you guys seen this? I knew you had yeah. some. You hadn't seen it. Very that. long time ago. Very long time Not ago. for a while. Yeah, not for a while. Really long. I only All I remembered from the whole film was the one, uh, <clears throat> like that T2 effect. That well, they always of, talk about that on like V8, yeah. uh, like VFX, like documentaries, yeah. don't they? Like, yes. Yeah. I think that was literally I, my only memory of this film. I remembered uh, big walls of water that weren't in the version I watched this time, so I was very oh, confused. Big walls of water. Ve- what, like when things oh, are flooding? That's the that's the we'll get we'll edition. get to it later on, oh, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I know what you're saying. Yeah, basically, end of the film, and I was like, "What's happened?" And I was like, "Oh, all right, yeah, I'm not watching the right <laughs> version." <but I'm> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, this is a sci-fi. So whereabouts does this come in? Here's this is after he's done Aliens. Yeah, if, pre T two, pre T two. So yeah. we've got a lot of like alien vibes in this, though, haven't we? And a lot of aliens vibes with the like. The... Well, you know, the he wrote this script when he was in college. Oh right, because uh, Cameron wanted to be a marine biologist. Yeah, until he found out he didn't earn much money. Well, he's well into substance which... shit now, isn't he? Yeah, so he wrote this. This is like his first script, I think, and mm. it, the idea of that water that you can breathe basically had that idea. What he invented so, that. No, he he read about it as a thing that, the, that some animal could do. Right, right. Um, and he thought that's a good idea for a film. People can breathe in water, like fish. And he had that was idea. That, was that the yeah. animal? And he wrote... <laughs> and no, no, no. Had he, no. he seen Mister Limpet or something? <laughs> Hang on, I'm going to find it for you. Well, that's what following fish the science, do, right? Abyss is loosely based on a short story he wrote in high school, following a science lecture where he learned animals could breathe a liquid oxygenated sal- saline solution. Oh, you mean like um, land animals can? Yeah, mm. like, you know that thing, the, the weird like yeah, water the they put in, in the yeah. things. Mm. Yeah, rat. Uh, the scripted adventure right contained far more liquid lung breathing. It's packed with a submersible oil rig. Oh no, that's just just, just a film. Yeah. yeah, carry on. Right. So basically, yeah, he wanted want to make it for a long time. Right, yeah. as a lot of his movies, I think they always have quite a long. When they come talking about them, he's always like, "Yeah, I thought of like Avatar like fifty years ago." Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whatevs, yeah. whatevs, whatever. Cameron. Um, <laughs> So this uh, initial, so you hadn't seen it for a while, Alex. No, initial thoughts? No. no. So you didn't really understand. You didn't really remember it. I not really. I uh, I watched it a few times. I forgot how bad the script is, but we'll get to that. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yep. Okay. So it starts with like this. Uh, uh, we start with a uh, a nuclear submarine, but we get like this epic James Horner esque music, which is actually Alan Silvestri. Um, mm. yeah. just all lots of um, choral stuff isn't it mm. um, I used to quite yeah. like submarines when I was a kid I was quite <laughs> into submarines I used to like Sequest DSV remember that oh yeah, um, yeah. Hunt for Red October was a good film oh yeah yeah I love yeah. all that mm. sub's a good setting but you know this is a very odd opening because you're just yeah. like who are these people I don't know who they Float are the buoy. yeah well what, you get a lot of doing? this sort of uh, you know realistic Stroke mm. um, stuff, which people like, and then uh, some. Of- it's very flat, though, isn't it? Even like it is, this- yeah, yeah, yeah. And and he, there's a weird light, so you're like, oh, is something going on? It's you know, light. you're like, oh, or there's a oh, is something moving faster than anything could ever move? Yeah. So you're like, oh, 
science fiction. There they're going. Maybe. Yeah. Is it the Ruskies? You know, where yeah. they're going? It's not. <laughs> 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 and then uh, they crash into the side of a mountain, which yep. they shouldn't really do. No. That's a bad no. move if you're driving a yeah. sub. And then, uh, yeah, they they disappear into like this uh, abyss, and Ooh. like the Ooh. a Cayman trough, it's called. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh. Yeah, that would have been a terrible name for the film, though. The Cayman trough. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wouldn't have worked. <laughs> and then uh, we meet our sort of oil rigger type people, which are on this like underwater. Well, it, this is the alien bit, isn't it? Because they're supposed to. Their banter is supposed to sound like. The crew yeah. of the Nostromo. Yeah. And it's it sounds, more Michael Bay, isn't it? Though, isn't yeah, it? I was about to say that. It sounds way more like Armageddon. They're much more yeah. like the kind of uh, Bruce Willis and uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so, yeah. Kind of. Apart from this one woman, well, well done. You've you've made one woman queen the, bitch yeah. of the universe. Is she's first? No, I mean the, well, yeah, but no, I mean the other woman, the old the black girl, woman. One. Night, oh right, boy, sorry, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then there's this ship above, which is sort of uh, giving them orders, isn't it? That's like the mm. support ship. Um, and you're trying to get a feel for who's who. It's a very strange character. The um, you know the, the one played by Mary Elizabeth is it? Isn't it? Yeah. You don't yeah. really all very understand odd, what's going they, on. Really, it's a they're lot into, of yeah. odd. Yeah, like you say, it's a lot of odd characters. It's a lot of stuff thrown at you very early on with not much kind of explanation. Mm. Um, and was I, I think he's trying to make you feel like part of the crew, isn't he? By it all being very like you know fast cutting and all we're all talking like we talk yeah but it just doesn't work does it i didn't buy no. it at all no you're kind of not really sure who the hero is at that point like who i mean you're they set up early on there's a kind of us and them with the military with michael yeah. Ben coffee but the actual the lines kind of, of dialogue are so clunky though aren't they it's not like mm. this would have worked yeah. if it was just better lines of dialogue it was just really strange characterizations of what they were saying like yeah um, Wasn't he going for a divorce at the time? Yeah, I was going to get to that when we talk about the woman. Yeah, what, what's her name? Uh, um, Mary, is it? Oh, Mary Elizabeth Mastriano. Yeah, yeah. Do, Lindsay Lindsay Brigman. Yeah, yes. Uh, clearly, Cameron has got some womanish woman issues while writing this. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Hell Queen yeah. Bitch of the yeah. universe. Is disgusting. But yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. So obviously, there's there's things going on there. Um, so. I mean, this film is also notorious for like production issues yeah. and how mm. difficult it was to shoot and how yeah. everyone had a massive shit time. Uh, <laughs> you know the uh, the t shirt that the crew wore that they made for themselves. No, it said uh, "Life's Abyss" and then you dive. <laughs> that's that's what they all wore on right, set. Okay. Wow, I like that's good. That's good. <laughs> But yeah, they shot this in like this water tank in this old decommissioned power station mm. and they built the whole sort of rig in this tank. But this tank yeah. was actually so big that you needed decompression to actually go to the bottom of the set. Yeah. So they it, it's like you have to do the maths like it takes it, it was like an hour decompression. You have to yeah. sit there before you do any work. Oh my god! And say, for instance, mm. if you want to go to the bathroom or break for lunch, that yeah. you'd have to add two hours onto that. <laughs> oh my god. So basically, everyone was just pissing into this uh, tank. <laughs> so by the end of it, and they had to put in all this chlorine, and by the end of it, it was like a toxic environment for them, and they were all yeah, become oh. sick. Yeah. Um, um, Cameron spent 12 hours a day, six days a week for three months underwater. Because mm. he didn't want to do the <laughs> decompression. Um, no, I'm sure he could, but sometimes. But he also, like, he would be giving notes and stuff while upside down decompressing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the perfect <laughs> solution, you know, the perfect environment to yeah. give creative feedback. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah, it's it's funny. I do want to mention. It's kind of like it will link in at the end, I guess. But early on, they try and create quite a like a. Re I thought he was trying to create like a realistic environment, wasn't he? He was trying to be mm. like, oh, this is all real and this is how it works. And there's very very. They go on quite a lot when mm. Lindsay goes down with the SEAL team. Mm. There's all that talk about a decompression. Yeah, yeah. And, Oh, we've got to be eight hours. Yeah, they and, just yeah. slip their little facts in. 
Yeah, and we'll get the. If you I hope you haven't it, got you high get pressure sickness, nervous syndrome. Yeah, and all this stuff. Right. I just want. I want us to discuss that mm-hmm. for what happens at the very end. So <laughs> yes. we, we put that in there. He was trying to be all technical at the beginning. Yeah. We've, we've talked yeah. about it, so yeah. we'll, we'll come back to it later. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So terrible shooting problems on this uh, film, um, and basically they. Uh, do the little search of the uh, nuclear submarine with all the dead people in. Mm. Oh, where yeah. they get offered yeah. the money, they go down. That's pretty. I remember that scene because I I've got it's got like that Jaws sort of thing going on, hasn't it? With but there's like people. there's no score, is there under any of this? No, I mean sometimes it's, that could be effective, right? Mm. It can, yeah, done well, but it just feels very empty because like like you said, the dialogue's very like forced and not very good. Mm. And yeah. I think the fact that because they're all in suits. There's no physical sort of no. action going on, is there? Mm. It just no. felt very like the film hadn't really started for me, mm. like all through this. No, bit. Very... yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, it's still like a bit of a preamble, isn't it? Like, mm. um, yeah, it's weird. It's very strange. So they're doing and this. Also, oh no, I was just to say because also it's this point where like you have another alien sighting. Absolutely, and it's supposed to kind of like be creepy, but I just didn't. It, I didn't feel like it. You know, the Cameron can direct. It didn't feel threatening or creepy to me. It, it kind no. of mm. felt very malevolent, which is what... It felt very kind of peaceful. It should have been like just, it was inside one of the bodies and came out well, the mouth yeah. or something. Or? Like, there's nothing wrong with having a bit of like, oh, there was a misunderstanding. Because the alien is, spoilers, nice. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with it at the beginning. It may be attacking someone because it was. It might have felt it was threatened or something. There's, why yeah. not have that? It, it just yeah. seems silly. Like, all you get is this kind of shimmering light, which is quite a nice colour. Yeah. And then the guy freaks out, but he's freaking out anyway. And mm. he's just seen a crab crawling out of a man's mouth. So mm. it's, It seems weird as well. You think how, like, the Nostromo is so much like a submarine and mm. the shots of that um, in Aliens... He plays the dark up really well about like the fear of it, mm. but this just feels like there's no, like you say, no threat at all, is mm. there? But you could no. do quite a lot with it, couldn't you? Really? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's a, it's a space like you say, it's so big you can't really get a fix on where anyone is, what they're mm. looking at, it, or were these people near that person? Like it's it's almost too the gra- He obviously got so excited by the grandeur and the size of everything that he lost the kind of like the spatial awareness for the audience of where mm. things could be. In, in it is that, creepy that. though, like the darkness, you know, when they, mm. when she comes across the propeller of the sub and all that, it is quite yeah. creepy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um. And some of those shots, let's, my positive to this is some of that stuff <laughs> looks yeah. good. It does look good. That's my exact same note is like yeah. the exterior shots and even yeah. the space, but yeah, and that is the one good thing about the film. I think the exteriors look really good. I mm. think. Yeah. Yeah. So they see this UFO, um, well, what do we call it? An, an, an unidentified uh, submerged object, like a NTI, she starts calling NTI, it. that was it, yeah. yeah, NTI. A non-terrestrial intelligence. Um, mm-hmm. And then, uh, yeah, so it it sort of then revolves around, we go on to like this Navy SEALs have got their own little mission going on now. Hmm. Now, um, where they they take the mini sub and they go and try and um, get the nuke out of the submarine. Yeah, like the warhead. It's not really explained what's going on, really. No, it's not at all, is no. it? Um, it's very like the whole like middle like hour and a half, just mm. this murky mess of. I'm not sure you can even do that. Like take a warhead out of a nuclear missile like that. Like, um, what? Why are they doing it anyway? Why do they want to get it no, out? And there's like. There's like 50 on one of them things. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, and then they've got an ulterior mission now. Well, it turns into through the course of the film that their actual mission is to now use that against the aliens for some reason. Um, mm. Not really explained. Um, there's a storm going up ahead, which absolutely fucks up that ship up, up the top. And the, yeah. uh, the crane falls down. And yep. it's like a big yeah. moment of tension now. There's this guy screaming down the radio, going, the crane! And it's obviously it's AD- the guy off, um, ADR'd. Like. It, it, the video, it's the video man off Groundhog Day. Yeah, it is. The top. Uh, <laughs> yeah, guy. it is, yeah, the cameraman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the cameraman, yeah. No, no, the guy shouting on the radio is the uncle from Home Alone, isn't it? Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Everyone's in it. Yeah. Because yeah. the crane! 
The Korean. Right, so basically, yeah. and and the old man who's the boss on the thing is from a comedy. He used to be on like uh, Scrubs. Yeah, he is. Yes. Like yeah. basically, this the crew of the ship are all comedy. They're all jokers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then this crane falls down and you think, oh, it's going to go to shit. Uh, and it lands in front of the, uh, the rig. Yeah. And then mm. it falls off the cliff and it's like, uh-oh. So you've got now got a bit of a bit, you know, an, a secondary. Yeah, it looks nice, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, well, it doesn't really do anything though, does it? It just kind of drags them a bit. Or... Yeah, and they couldn't detach it because the Navy SEALs have got the mini sub. Yeah. Um, oh, there isn't really any tension, though, is it? No. It's no. I mean, they, they, what they hit here is a fundamental problem with filming stuff in water because stuff moves slowly. Mm. Yeah. So you kind of have stuff happening very slowly, which isn't that exciting. Um, I guess you have to sort of sell the weight of things, like the the mass and that sort of maybe. thing, don't you? But, but it's also like the crushing... Yeah, that's... I mean, like Hunt for October, stuff like that, it... it it's a claustrophobia of it, isn't it? Yeah. And the the instruments mm. and and also I think the script is still a lot of work because they're describing to you why it's you should feel worried, aren't Hunt they? For Red October yeah. as well, like it is. It's, yeah, it's it's, um, it's like a science fiction film. The, yeah, the I think this like, yeah this this film shows you how good that film is really mm. because yeah. all the elements are so hard to work with and they don't work here, do they? No, but it does no. work <clears> in that. So yeah. Uh, so you get this like series of events until they like nearly get pulled over the edge. Uh, and then we get like mm. another, the, the UFO turns up again, the jelly, like it's a big jellyfish thing. There's yes. not any like, uh, the, the alien changes shape, form and. Yeah. It, it's like someone's done like a demo reel to try and get a job at an effects house. <laughs> well, yeah. don't yeah, you think? That's, yeah, a little bit. Mm. Well, my, I mean, we can get into it now. My main issue, I would almost say. It's almost like this film isn't a science fiction film. It's almost like he wanted to do all of the the underwater stuff and he wanted to make it all super realistic and all that. And then he realised that he had a few things that didn't make any sense to create action. Hmm. So he just threw an alien in to kind of explain stuff or to get away with some stuff that Hmm. just you you wouldn't get away with in a normal film. I think the, the, it's even worse than that, is that he's basically got the idea of filming underwater in a way no one's done before. Yeah. And he hasn't got a story. I and mean, he's got the idea yeah. of that saline solution. Mm. Yeah. Which and there's nothing really... Plot. Yeah. No, but there's not really a plot beyond that, is there? Other than no. Well, it's going for like water, a close encounters alien. style amorphous story. Yeah. yeah. Where yeah, but... just there being aliens is story enough, which I'm not sure it is. No, it isn't. And in fact, it's even more... I mean, I read, you know, the, the bit uh, where the big tentacle special effect yeah. thing appeared. Yeah. Uh, I know we haven't got to that yet, but but they filmed that so that if the effect looked no good, it didn't affect the story in any way whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> so that whole scene, if the effect didn't look good enough, yeah. they could have cut that entire scene out. But, but if you're making a film about an alien where the first exactly, encounter yeah, with the alien can be cut out, it's yeah. not really a film about an alien, is it? I mean, it tells you all you need to know, really, doesn't well, it, about the film? That yeah, does. Little, yeah. Like, well, it's kind of yeah, like the alien trying to exist in our environment, I guess. I don't, I don't know, but but I mean, it, it, it's going more. Clo- it is more close encounters than it is alien, isn't it? It's yeah. more this kind of like, oh, isn't it beautiful? Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it multicolored? But he's but he's already got the spectacle of filming underwater. You don't mm. almost need that spectacle of an alien as well. Yeah. You know, it's, it's yeah. kind of... But you need something, though, because the well, plot of just, like, Michael Bean goes a bit mad and tries to get a nuke isn't a film, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's not a film. No. No. Um, no. I, I don't know what... I don't know if there's enough bits in here to salvage a film. Like, I don't even know if you can pick one plot line and go, okay, that's a film. It's just the script you know? isn't strong enough at all. Like, there's there's no. nothing no. there's nothing redeeming about the the dialogue or the story. It's no, no. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe if you had had the oil riggers alone, they had been hired to find the ship and mm. uh, under false pretenses, then they find the nuke, and then the people above ground are kind of doing stuff to them below ground, as it were. So mm. the people above in the sea have gotten a plan that the oil riggers don't know about. So why did so they maybe, take the nuke, though? Why who? Why did who take why the Why did nuke? the seals take the nuke off the uh, Yeah, wh- submarine? why did they want it? Because they knew about the, uh, the, the Russians, inverted commas, yeah. and they needed it to 
to kill the Russians. That was plan B, isn't it? Plan B is to blow up the thing that they think is Russian. But they must have other subs, wasn't they? Yeah. With nukes on them. Maybe they can't leave a nu- you can't leave a nuclear sub down like that because then anyone could go and just take But these the subs have it. like 50 of them. Mm. No, it's not a good plot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we you know. But no, I'm Quite saying let's explain it. No, but uh, yeah. No, I'm saying maybe if the plot had been just oil riggers underwater, evil army yeah. people up up on the top, and then them against each other, that would have been maybe more interesting. I don't know. The mm. seals being down there doesn't really help because they're. Yeah. I mean, Michael Bairn is very obviously mad. I mean, he's very obviously mad very early on, and everyone says he's mad, mm. but no one does anything about it, and I don't know no. why they don't do anything about it. Yeah. And then they follow his orders anyway, kind yeah. of reluctantly, don't they? But, oh, I don't know. Yeah. It's a mess. Anyway, yeah, so them seals are up to no good. Um, and then we get, like, this crazy... Oh, sorry, the, you get the tent- water tentacle stuff. We kind of covered that. Um, and then you kind of get this crazy, like, dodge sequence with a load of mini-subs, don't you? <laughs> like, where they're all just ramming each other. Yeah. Which is yeah. really probably an ad- ill-advised to do with <laughs> yeah she probably shouldn't do that um yeah uh the nuke uh falls onto a ledge or something you know yeah it's just you know it's like oh it's good basically the the it i guess that sort of drop off to the it is quite scary that big dark drop off though isn't it like as a thing mm. like yeah um, yeah yeah uh, only one suit. Woman dies, and then he's brought back to life. Um. So this bit, mm. right? <laughs> yeah. If you're in any doubt that James Cameron had got a problem with women, I mean, it's also yeah. his wife is Gail Ann Hurd, who mm. produced this film. Mm. That's who he's divorcing. Yep. And the fact that to revive her, he he uh, Ed Harris is slapping her and screaming in her yeah. face, oh, "Come man. on, yeah. you yeah. bitch!" Yeah. yeah that I mean, it's, it's a so little weird. bit. Awkward, isn't it? Really, <laughs> zapping it with the electric also, thing. This is the second time you've watched uh, a living being drown, and you get mm. another one later on. So mm. basically, I don't know if James Cameron has a fetish for watching things that are alive drown, but you've already had the rat drowning I think in the liquid yeah. solution, which it isn't, but it is. Um, and also, I read that you know because there's a people because it cuts away, doesn't it, while you're watching the rat adjusting to the liquid mm, yeah it cuts to them watching and the yeah, only yeah. reason it cuts is because the rat just shat itself so much <laughs> <laughs> so you can't really what they don't want to show you so they actually didn't itself. have any of this special liquid then they just no they did no it. that is no it is the special liquid oh right it, it does work it's just part of the process is the rat just it makes shat it itself. itself and you don't really want to watch that because yeah. it's not great to watch well the rat doesn't yeah, know it's is... special water does it no, it doesn't. I mean, in fact, the American Humane Association rated this film unacceptable <laughs> because of that film. Because it just says that it's being it's subjected to the anxiety of being submerged in liquid, yeah. where it panics and struggles and then pulled out by its tail. It, so, like, technically this film kind of should have been... That should have been cut out or it should have been banned. That, mm. You can't get away with that. You, well, you're James Cameron. The humans now, went but, through quite a lot to shoot this movie, let alone well, yeah. that. Like. But yeah, as you say, this is now the second person you're watching drown, yeah. and then we get to watch a third person. I think he drown. likes watching that sort of gag reflex, I don't water know. coming it's, it's out. Pretty, you know when water sort of comes in. out of Ed Harris's mouth yeah. at the end. Mm. Um, also, did you not think that uh, the Lindsay character looked a bit like she was dressed like uh, Michael J. Fox? Martin McFly, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, isn't yeah. it weird? It's like a, it's like a really, ob- it just really looks like it. She's not it? a very engaging think- leading lady, I don't think. Well, no, but, mm. but I don't think it's her fault. The problem with her character is that, like, oh. literally everyone there just repeatedly calls her a bitch all the way through the film. Yeah. And her, like, hero arc is that she goes from being, like, the powerful woman who owns a thing to being subservient to Ed Harris and being like, I'll be a good wife, you know, yeah. I'll sit yeah. here and look after you and all this sort of shit. Yeah. It's terrible. It's really, like, as you yeah. say, it's just it's going through divorce and a series has got some real issues going on, but it just doesn't look... It's not a good look, especially not in this no. day and age, is no. it? No, you know. she's supposed to, like, have made that rig and know everything about mechanics and all yeah, that, but yeah. you don't really see that. You don't see her being you should have. She or, should or, have something over all of them because she's a lot more educated, really, she's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. And while she does that at the start, they're all just going, oh, you bitch, you bitch, you know, you're terrible, you <laughs> yeah. bitch. And then as soon as she drops that, and she <laughs> just is, becomes like, like... literally, fucking bitch. It is, isn't it? Oh, she is, Every, bitch. Like, 
I went on the uh, me doing. I went on the IMDb, IMDb uh, quote thing. Uh, it's not easy being a cast iron bitch. Where else yeah. you got? God damn it, you bitch! You never backed away from anything. Bitch. God, I hate that bitch. <laughs> oh no! Look who's with them, Queen Bitch of the Universe. It's terrible. Yeah. And then they stop that because once obviously she comes back to life, she does nothing then other than just cheerlead Ed Harris. Mm. Yeah. So you know, back in your box. You know, <laughs> shut yeah. up. It's terrible. It's really bad. Yeah. Yeah. So I she on that scene. Sorry, just on that scene on. where they were doing the resuscitation. Mm. I read that they did it so they did so many retakes that at what and she was obviously half naked and soaking wet. Uh, mm. At one point, she just got up and stormed off the set, yelling, "We are not animals!" and wouldn't come back until Cameron agreed to wrap it. <laughs> yeah, they they all were pretty like pissed off, weren't they? She uh, when they finished it and they did the press tour, she went a one, wouldn't go on the press tour. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's because um, she's so upset Such about how they filmed film. it. I think yeah. just being on because got... James Cameron has got absolutely no um, like other agenda than the movie. So yeah, like, oh, totally, everyone yeah. else's needs and requirements are secondary. Um, yeah, God. Uh, it's the same on. I think Aliens had a similar vibe. Like it's difficult. It's a difficult shoot. It's funny that Michael Bien. Just it's like worked with him so many times then. Mm. He was pissed off as well. I read a thing about him. Do you want to? I've got a quote here about uh, Ed Harris and his his experience there. Do you want this? This is yeah. from uh, mattmuller.co.uk. Um, for nearly five months on the abyss, Ed Harris had to endure being 30 feet underwater in a dive suit um, up to four or five times a day. Um, but on this occasion, he couldn't breathe because the experimental, this experimental suit with the breathing fluid stuff, mm. and he relied on a safety diver. Uh, shadowing him to stick an oxygen regulator in his mouth when Cameron wanted him to to like, make mm. sure he didn't actually drown mm. problem was the safety diver got hung up on a cable mm. and couldn't reach the actor mm. oh my god um, and when someone finally got there they put the regulator in upside down yep. so Harris inhaled a mixture of air and water yep. and, oh and my god so basically very or nearly dying when you breathe in yeah and the regulator's upside down it just yeah. it just god. gives you a mouthful of water yeah god <laughs> oh man so yeah, and no then, you know, like when you breathe really. that in and it just fills your lungs in with water, you immediate, you just cough and it all goes to shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, doesn't sound fun. <laughs> yeah. No, it doesn't sound fun. So, yeah, I mean, this, I think this shoot goes down in history as the worst fucking thing. <laughs> wasn't Titanic really bad as well, though? Didn't you have loads of issues with that? Probably, but th- it wasn't like, it's no, it wasn't as dangerous. Bad as this, no. No. No, yeah. that's dangerous, yeah. No. Um, also, at this point, we've completely forgotten that aliens are in this film, haven't we? I mean... Yeah. During the plot, the plot of this is that Michael Bairn's mad, he's taken a, a new... Nuke. I mean, there's no aliens, they're not mentioning the alien. No, no. We don't see the alien. Yeah, she's just died, they're bringing her back. The alien doesn't bring her back to life. No. Like, aliens have gone at this point. Aliens really, have disappeared. They? No. And then uh, Ed Harris decides to go and defuse the nuke. Mm-hmm. Which is stupid. Should have sent someone else, anyone else, with a with his special suit on. Yeah, uh, which looks silly anyway. That suit, and he gets the right. Don't get your pantyhose in a don't twist. Don't get your pantyhose yeah. in a twist. What a terrible thing. Yeah, yep. yeah. Uh, <laughs> he dives down, down, he down, and then dives he's... down, down, down. He yeah. diffuses it successfully, but hasn't got enough air. To get back, no. Could I could I just interject? Because you know you always say that uh, it's good people like listening to us having meetings about the podcast. Mm. If we could, mm. you know that bit at the end where here where there, he's messaging and he says, "Oh, it's a one way trip," and mm. she's like, "No, no," mm. and he's like, "No, I always knew it." Mm. Could mm. we? Could we nick that and then have him just put and then just have him type on the screen? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm going to listen to the latest uh, SFRS podcast and then just put the podcast on and just sit down there under the water. I think that'd be quite a good like, little advert. Do that for as us. an Instagram <laughs> meme. Yeah, that'd be a good advert, wouldn't it? Like, yeah, good one, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, anyway. Get on it then. Do it. Anything yeah, which involves a screen we could use, couldn't we? Mm. It's just because he's typing. I thought it'd be so funny if he just put, it's all right, I've got the latest science fiction rating system podcast. We should just write, don't get your pantyhose in a yeah. twist. SFRS is here every week. I'm now, listening to SFRS. Really. Yeah. 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 Bitch. Oh, and an alien's come. <laughs> Brilliant. <Yeah. laughs> he's listening too. You yeah. have to call her a bitch at the end, though. 
Yeah, yeah, bitch. bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up, bitch. I'm listening to SFRS. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so then uh, the aliens come back and this, yeah. like, mm. happy alien with wings takes him uh, for a little... Uh, like, a, like a Disney trip. ride, isn't it? Yeah, a little it's, ride. It's a bit... It's a bit Tron, isn't it? The colouring. Very Tron. Is very I, like the shot, I like the shot when they go, like, down in the pipe. I like that. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then he gets to this, like, room where the water... Goes to the sides Splits. and he's got like a little mm. bubble where he can breathe. And then he got, you can actually see the liquid in his helmet, can't you? And then he like takes oh, a helmet. Horrible. It's like, how did they do that without killing him? Yeah. Well, this, that, this, that's the shot where he almost died, I think. Yeah. That one. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's just, again, this is James Cameron watching someone nearly drowning, choking. Because it's like they have yeah. to start <laughs> the shot. Up water. Well start done. the shot with his head in a, like a fish bowl. In the water. Yeah. yeah. It's mental. Horrible. Uh, and then he's like just throwing up water. And then, uh, uh, yeah, so up top, the weather's all good. The weather's all better. Suddenly, um, cause of, because aliens, isn't aliens. it? So this, That's implied, yeah. isn't it? So this is the bit. Yeah. I'm guessing you both watched the theatrical version as well. Um, yes, I, I guess did, so. yes. At because the two, hours, two hours 20 is enough. Um, that's what that was on Netflix. It's two hours 50, the special edition. But that's what I must have had on VHS or whatever, because... What happens here in that version, yeah. which makes it a little bit more sense, is that the aliens are actually about to... They're like threatening to basically kill everyone by making these huge tsunamis go on all the coasts mm. and destroy humans mm. because of because they've got nukes and they're going to destroy themselves. Mm. It doesn't really make uh, much sense, but they're like, okay. well, if you, don't, if you don't nuke each other, we're going to kill you all anyway. Uh. And then, so like the mess you saw of the nuclear de makes them back down and go like, oh no, we won't do it for real because... Kind of like You're Superman not... Quest for Peace. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's, but, but I was just so confused because I remembered that mm. really well and it wasn't in it, but yeah. There's very like actual communication with the alien, really, or, like of any no. meaning, is and there, they, really? And they look a bit crap. When, they, they're all, they look they're, awful. They're just a grey. They're the kind of traditional grey, but in a kind of weird Well, angel. they're lots of different shapes and sizes, like a family of... Mm. Um, they're just rubbish they don't look very good and then I like um, is it is it Michael Bean who touches one on the hand and it's like obviously that's a practical effect and it's all like yeah is it no no it's at the end like, Ed Harris take, it takes him by the Ed hand Harris. but you can yeah, tell it's it a really like rubbery looking awful mm. <laughs> yeah. shitty hand yeah yeah but this but, is just the bit as I said at the beginning it's all scientific and when you need to decompress and this and that and the other and then basically the whole end of this film is just oh well aliens have sorted it all out and you, and you think oh what science and it's just the answer is no aliens they've solved it for us it's all alright aliens just how did the th- like the uh, oil rig uh, how did the like submersible rig end up on top of that alien ship city because yeah, I don't know. you could see it was on the cliff w- and it was going yeah. past the edge of the cliff. Yeah, exactly. And it yeah. jump on. Why doesn't the ship tip over? So the aliens raise their entire city, which happens to have a very flat top on it for some reason. <laughs> yes. Like who builds a city that has a completely flat well, top? Well, it's like a flying saucer, shall we say, but it's just well, yeah. underwater. And, and one character just literally, uh, one character says, oh, we should have decompressed. What? We should decompress. And then they're like, oh, must have been the aliens. And they go, like, yeah. yeah. Laugh if they just the like aliens. fall over and go, like, <laughs> <laughs> heads explode. Yeah. See, I think it would have been a better fit. Or the rat just Harris... explodes. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, oh, they couldn't do rats. Yeah. <laughs> I think it would have been a better film if they'd had all that build up, but then Ed Harris had ended up in that weird room. And then it just turned into a straight up horror. And they just started like probing him. Yeah. And like, they'd been really. And just pulling all the ending. ships underwater yeah. and stuff. Well, no. Yeah. I, what I thought would be good was that it, it like surfaces, it just keeps going up. Yeah. And so they're like, shit, the we're rolling off this up. thing. Like, yeah, yeah we're like up in the air. No, that would have been good. <laughs> That'd have been even better. It's the lame, lame, lame ending. It's the, like the cheapest like Deus yeah. Ex Machina ever, isn't it? Really, yeah. it's so. Yeah. yeah. It would have yeah, been better if rubbish. that last bit wasn't wasn't in like broad daylight. Yeah. Yeah. If it. Yeah, I think I think Sam's hit the nail on the head. James Cameron wanted to do a film underwater, and he had no idea, no plot, but he was powerful enough to basically wing it, and and this is it. He just made it up as he went along. It's a lot of effort you know. though they went through for poor story though, isn't it? But I guess, like you said, it, it, all he cares about is the filming experience. He's actually more interested in that than even the than the film. I think he's a know? good filmmaker. 
But this doesn't Not, this help isn't, that case. This isn't, no. <laughs> well, I think I, well, I think he's a good filmmaker. If reined in, like Avatar is not a great film, is it? There are bits to um, it I quite like. I mean, the actual yeah, story bits, bits. and the the yeah. base, you know, the basic story is a very strong story. I think. Um, but I think it has like problems like this of where if he's left to his, to his own uh, devices, like he just yeah, it, it's got the worst excesses. Super I like True indulgent. Lies. That's a good film. Yeah. True, no, true I, it made me think. Actually, someone else could make a film underwater, and I would quite like to see mm. this. This you say that though. Spectacle done have well. you ever seen uh, Barry Levinson's Sphere? No, I haven't. Oh, is that Dustin not... Hoffman? That no, covers okay. a lot of the yeah. same sort of thing. And that's even it? worse, isn't it? Uh, okay. that's, right. That is really boring. Maybe we just. But at least that had the interest of like done. they went on, they went on to like the spaceship, didn't they? And yeah, yeah. So do you just think it's an environment that you can't really, as a filmmaker, Chris? Do you think it's just an environment that we just can't? I really, really like submarine film films, but. It it's more like, and I think that's why I like Star Trek because it's like submarine warfare. I like that sort of yeah. sonar still, mm. but it has to be done really well to build and, the tension. And outside of the water, that kind of like all the stuff that he does outside, do you think that's just not that interesting or it's too slow? It's or? just, I mean, all the technicality and all the technical talking is nonsense. And, yeah. and the characters are nonsense, the way they talk yeah. to each other. There's just no... Yeah. I'm just I'm just not buying the whole uh relationships like from the off. No. It's not very many likable characters really, are there? No. There's none. No. Yeah, like you know Ed Harris, um I remembered him being likable, but I've just missed it's Ed Harris from other films I'm remembering, isn't it? Like I love him in he's good yeah. in um Truman show, isn't he? He's always good yeah. he's a good actor. He's always but good. I think but, yeah. his character in this is just terrible and I don't think he's yeah. very good in it either, but you just I'm not sure I he's a leading man. Stuff. He's, no, he's more right. like he's, a, right. he's yeah, more like support. a good character actor, like a, you know, yeah. a, a secondary yeah. character actor, like well, sorry, good Ed. like um, Enemy at the Gates or something, you know. Mm. Yeah. Or Truman Show. Truman Show, yeah. Westworld, he's good in Westworld. Yeah, Westworld. Yeah. And wasn't he in Snowpiercer? He's pretty good in Snowpiercer. Although that's a bit of a weird character. What was he in Snowpiercer? Wasn't he Snowpiercer at the very end? Isn't he the bloke at the front? Oh of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Front right, of yeah. the oh yeah, I forgot the, about the front that. Front of the uh, he's train, like yeah. Wizard of Oz, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Well, well. Okay then. So that's pretty much wraps that one up. Uh, yeah. I I seem to remember more of like the text message stuff. You know where they were like communicating the, with it more. I think it's the the the, the director's cut. Yeah. Because it's half an hour longer. So there's got to be a lot more of everything, really, hasn't there? Yeah. In that. Because I remember like a whole thing where it was they were texting each other quite a lot. But that might have been a different movie. Was that the Sphere? Mm, I don't know. I can't remember. You know, it kept coming up more on the screen. There was just a lot more, more of that. But underwater text movie. Yeah, that's your... a lot of SMS um, going on. Uh, the Abyss, right? Where's this thing? I'm going to find it. Obviously, a lot of films get out, get 4K releases nowadays. Right. Uh, so he was kind of pushing for it in 2014. Going, yeah, we're going to do it in 4K. He said, "We've done a wet gate 4K scan. What's a wet gate?" <laughs> It's to do with wet, the, ooh, probably underwater. Well, the gate of a camera or something. Yeah. You know what I mean, like doing a four K scan of the original negative. It's going to look insanely good. We're going to do an authoring pass in the DI for Blu Ray and HDR at the same time. Nice. Uh, this has not been released. There are no plans to release it. <laughs> so it's almost like he's done it. He's had yeah. it sitting there for years, and no one's interested in putting out the. He's trying to bamboozle 4K. people with technicality, yeah. technical talk. If you go around yeah. this house, you can probably watch it. Yeah, but yeah. Let's go, it. yeah, we're going to do a, a, a wet scan of the DI, and and you turn around, he's running off. He's <laughs> <laughs> just run off. <laughs> See ya. Um, and my other note was the music, which I thought was awful. What do you think? There were the some music awful moments to it. Yeah, I thought there were some good bits to it, but there was also some bad bits. It's generally very over the top. It's like kind of cliched, wasn't it? You know, that like ethereal yeah. kind of... Oh, yeah. like it's all very... The bit where the ship like, like comes up at the bodged. end is pretty too epically yeah. over the top. It's Nowhere a... near as good as Predator. No. Definitely what, not. Yeah, what are you doing, Sylvester? You can do better. That was a good I thing about the to, new trying to be the James Predator. Horner, they had the original music. It was good. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Mm. Cool. All right then. Right. So let's uh, let's rank let's rank this. Yeah. Um, can someone paragraph 
1984 over for me. Yeah, thanks. Just, just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just annoying that was me annoying well. me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Literally right. Um, shit. Where where do you reckon, Alex? Uh, underneath Thunderbirds, but above Ooh. Indiana Jones. Where's that? Ninety three. Is that ninety four? Ninety five. Yeah. Man, it, I just thought it's boring. I think that there's some good technical stuff there, but it's so minimal. And I really, really, I think the science fiction element to this is so lame. It's so bodged on that it's almost not a science fiction film, but it is. But it's almost like it, it, it shouldn't be. Mm. So I kind of that was what offended me. I'd go for, I think, 92. That's, that's what I was Because Quest say. for Peace is absolute rubbish, and this is... And it's got a similar sort of nuke message. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'm all right with that. This is a slightly better, more competent And film. I do like yeah. Gun Carter. Yes, yes it won't blow. Love, <laughs> love the Gun, Gun, Gun Carter, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah no, so I'm all right saying, with that. I'm not, I'm not fighting. No, no 92. <laughs> it's not worth it. <laughs> and I think, well, like, Ed, go. like Ed Harris, we should all never talk about this again. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, if someone tries to re-rank it... No, it's not, no, it's not way. no, no way. No way. Come on now. <laughs> Did I tell you that um, Bill Paxtonson like, reached out to us and wanted to be in the Alien short? Did he? Really? We haven't really got wow. part for him, unfortunately, but... Uh, oh. oh, wow. That was a shame. Mm. Could he not... I might uh, try and just... yeah, get him on the VO or something. Uh, get him to come on the podcast. Yeah, I could do. Could ask him. Couldn't he be on a video screen somewhere? Could he be like on someone a someone comes on the radio? I could get do. I thought about that. Yeah, lifting up behind okay. the curtain now for listeners. This Sorry, is, yeah. yeah. When are you filming, by the way? When's the shoot dates? Can we come and visit? The week of the fifteenth of October is the fifteenth of October. Is Woo! the uh, is action stations? Put it in our diaries. We've not got our scripts yet. What's going on? Yeah, what what yeah. parts are we playing? Yeah. I've been rehearsing my uh, Muppets my, uh, in Space chest accent. bursting. Yeah. yeah, no, I was going to put on a funny accent for it. Uh, All right, okay. you, no, uh, Sam, are you a, you're you're a, are you going to be a robot in it? What you, what did you? No, I've been rehearsing by eating loads of food like John Hurt. <laughs> and then going, <laughs> that's my chest burst. Okay, very good. Loads of milk. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Lots of milk, Ash. lots of noodles. I've I've gone down the Alien Three route. I've shaved my head and I just drink tea a lot and go ah Ripley. I've got a really oh, right, yeah. an accent. Yeah, you've all I've got done. you've all got like northern accents, Yorkshire yeah. accents. I've got I'm doing my Yorkshire accent, drinking yeah. tea. Ah Ripley, yeah. welcome yeah. to the colony. Fucking alien. <laughs> <laughs> right, all right then. Well, so, uh, do, do you want to give us the links? Is it? Oh, no, yeah. no, no, well, no, no, no. Uh, Cut to what ourselves. We next week. Hi again, it's us. Have you got a beer, Chris? Yep. Do you want to do a plug um, in? <laughs> it's, it's a big one. It's Sierra Nevada. Oh, I love Sierra Nevada. They're not going to give us a. Um... I've got into it recently. Oh, have you had so the, nice. We had Torpedo. Oh, yeah. It, so that is incredible, isn't it? I love that beer. Yep. Yeah. Oh, they're all good. Yeah. They're all good. Yeah, good hoppy, stuff. hoppy, hoppy. Um, so next week we are watching the uh, Australian sci-fi classic, in quotes, um, Mad Max, directed by George Miller and starring Mel Gibson, uh, a film that was in the conscious few years ago when Mad Max Fury Road came out, which mm. was a good time. Was a good one. Um, I don't think the original Mad Max is seen that often, is it? I think people remember the one with Tina Turner in it, which is yes. Beyond the Thunderdome, which is the third one. But the actual original is yeah, not. Think... Is not. I mean, there's a reason for that. Anyway, it made it made loads <laughs> of money. It made a hundred million dollars off a three hundred fifty thousand dollar budget, which wow. is pretty incredible. That's business. That is business. Kaching. <laughs> yeah, Chris's yeah. eyes lighting up. <laughs> that yeah. is business, bitch. <laughs> That's boats. Yeah. So, uh, money. it's in the near future, as it often is. Society is close to collapse. It's not the absolute uh, post-apocalyptic wasteland it will become in later Mad Max. Just films. Australia in the 80s. Pretty much, yeah. No, it <laughs> pretty much is. Uh, and there's a motor I gang. can say that because I've been there a lot, so I'm not being racist. Well, you're We've not got Aus- relatives. You're not We've Australian, though, are you? Sorry? You're not Australian, though. You know, so. What is Australian? <laughs> <laughs> People wow. born in Australia. <laughs> Aboriginal people. You're really doubling down on that Australia diss. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get beef with Australia started here, I think. Uh, anyway, quickly moving on. Um, there's a biker gang who are up to no good, and they uh, 
happen upon Max and do nasty things to his family. They make him mad. They make him mad and Max wants revenge. Um, the most interesting thing about this film is that Brian made it the soundtrack. How you know what? I don't that? think I've seen this, you know. There's a reason for that. Uh, let's... <laughs> Has he got a mask on like, uh, what's his face in Fury Road? No. It's a it's a very different film to any other Mad Max film. Um, okay. Have you seen it, Alex? I think I have, but then maybe yeah. you're right. Maybe I haven't. I, it's it's about, weird, isn't it? About a year ago, perhaps a bit longer, I had a terrible, terrible flu. I was really ill. And oh. for some reason, I, I watched... you were going to end it. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't know. I was, something was going on. I watched every Mad Max film back to back. Um, I'm saving uh, Godfather trilogy for, for when, when you're really ill. I think I'm really... yeah. But you'll end Death on door. three. What's like? Oh, and then you want to kill yourself, Connor, because it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, at least I oh. ended on Fury Road, so I got better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you watch them. You don't want to end on three, do you? That's an awful film. Anyway, maybe uh, watch them backwards. Yeah, you never seen Godfather, then, Chris? Mm. No, I'm saving things for my old age. I'm telling you. <laughs> Whiskey, I'm not There'll really be... a drinker of. No, okay. Cheese, I'm saying you know. Cheese, right? Okay. Well, fair enough. Well, let's. I uh, have eaten cheese. Yes, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> it's a thing that you could really go deep what, into, it, and what? I'm just saving it for my later years. Yeah, that's fair Maybe enough. This would come out of us <laughs> watching a Mad Max trailer. Well, one thing that we won't let you say for your later years is Mad Max. It's so a philosophy. Trailer. Hashtag philosophy yeah, films. Of, it's a cultural philosophy. <laughs> cultural philosophy. Well, let's let's. Watch There's Mad so much Max. shit out there. You just got to just take it one one take thing your time. at a time. Yeah. <laughs> Only law will be a renegade squad of suicidal cops. He's my prisoner, and he's not walking out that door. And the open road will be controlled by gangs of glory roaders. Max is a cop, one of the best. Where does he have to get you? Scoot jockeys. Must have been a crazy shoot to, to like make this film. It looks like they just did a lot of it like on the in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. From someone who's got who had a speeding ticket in Australia, I can say that this is <laughs> probably just <laughs> shot on the roads. So you had a speeding ticket earlier. Is that why you've got beef with them? Because they gave you a speeding yeah. ticket. I've got beef yeah. with them. They're major like pen pushing bureaucracy idiots. Yeah. Oh man. But I love Pulling it. Out Australia it's a lovely right country. Oh, it's a lovely place, yeah. Um what was I going to say? Have you? Seen, I I saw a film which was set in Australia post-apocalyptic not so long ago, hmm. and it had the story was basically a guy's car gets nicked and then he goes after them, and um, it sounds like John Wick. At this China, point. China wins. China. It looks like China's taken over the country because, like, on the side of the trains, it's got Chinese writing and stuff. And the police are like the army and it's kind of like if it's really recent to like a war, basically. But he finally catches up with his car and the person that's nicked it and basically just his dog's in the boot. And that's the only reason that he wanted Wow. A car. What a weird film. It, it was very was good. In it? it was very good. It's someone there's one person big in it. It was like indie, but it was really good. Yeah. Quite new, like three, four years ago. Is it the Rover with Guy Pearce? Yeah, it's the Rover. Ah, uh, I haven't seen mm. that. I would have to add that. Yeah, it's worth then. seeing because it's definitely in this sort of, um, you know, it's with this in mind. You know. Yeah. Well, we'll see how we get on with this, and then we'll add. But it's excellent. That at some point. Yeah. Cool. Um, what was I going to say? That's it, really. Oh, what I was going to say. You know, what I'm saying about the Godfather, right? Mm. I was at the cinema a few years ago. Yeah. And um, like one of these, like you know, gala All screenings, the dream. Um, yep. you know, whatever on a sofa. And the, I mean, you were, you've seen The Godfather, haven't you, Alex? Yeah. You know, in the middle when he goes back to Italy, he goes to the old country, and a it's spoiler, all subtitled. Spoiler. Um, and the, yeah. the guy forgot to put the subtitles on the film, right? <laughs> but we have not seen it long enough that we were kind of like, at first, you're just like, you're not meant to understand this. But then as the scenes yeah. go on and on and on, you're like, this isn't right. Yeah. Anyway. I fell asleep after that because obviously it's quite relaxing that bit of the film and yeah. there's like nice, you know, things yeah, going good. on. Yeah. And I woke up to the projectionist like bursting into the cinema going, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and like just rushing about because oh obviously God. he must have like not noticed he was 
what he'd done yeah. and then realised, like, shit, How'd I've not put the subtitles, subtitles off. You think it'd yeah. be burnt into the film, right? Yeah, I would have thought If it was so. that. It must yeah. be a, d- a digital copy. I-, I wonder if they're running off an Abbey with, like, an SRT file or something. Like, you know, it wasn't a legitimate sort of. Yeah, you think it. Or they were, yeah. Yeah, they were just running. Yeah, sounds hey, like, you, yeah, some you think weird, of, dodgy copy or something. Well, the reason I was bringing it up, well, I'm going to ask you, Alex, is that how. Like in your cinema, surely subtitles aren't a separate thing, are they? Was that no? Well, you'd play, you'd have versions of a, so say Time Crimes mm. that we uh, talked about earlier uh, a few weeks ago. You would have a version. Uh, we would receive the drive of the film, and it mm. would say um, it would have a, a little code which would be Spanish original language, and then it would have XX, which would be no subtitles. But what we would want to watch would be Spanish original a- language, and then EN after that, which would mean English subtitles. So if yeah. he was playing. Mm. Godfather, maybe they had a copy of The Godfather and it was supposed to be like E-N-E-N, as in mm. English with English subtitles, rather mm. than E-N with no subtitles. But then that's a bit weird, because the yeah, film isn't you, really a subtitled film. Yeah, like, and it's not at all in Italian, so why would you... No, they so were that's pl- odd. The Actually, I'll bleep that out, I don't want to call them out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit... I, I kind of like how it's a bit homemade there, though, how they're sort of... Yeah, you know, someone's DVD quite, and then quite turned good. on subtitles on the DVD player. Yeah. Is that pretty, what it was? It's, pretty it's a bit dodgy. like that thing in Lost World. I might have already spent... You know, where it, you know where he's he can't, trying to get someone on the radio and mm. they're talking Spanish and he can't talk to them. Mm. In... Do you, you know what I'm talking about? Like, in the, the plot, he's trying to... Jeff Goldblum's trying to get someone on the oh, radio yeah, to come yeah, and yeah. get yeah. them, right? And the person on the other end is Spanish, and that character can't talk Spanish, right? Yeah. So the Spanish version of that film, when they dub everything, what they did is on the end of the radio, they had someone talking an archaic like jungle language from the Amazon rainforest. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty clever. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Because that's how they make it work, being yeah, Costa Rica yeah. and... Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Well, um, we were doing a trailer for Mad Max, weren't we? Let's... <laughs> That's tangentially a long time ago. Anyway, that's that. Uh, We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Cheerio. We're watching Mad Max. We're watching Mad Max. Yay. Uh, so the website is sciencefictionratingsystem.com email is sciencefictionratingsystem at gmail.com and then Twitter Instagram uh, we don't bother with Facebook everyone it's not really worth it uh, so Twitter and Instagram are SF Rating System uh, and that's it check us out we've got a bit in le- uh, we've got a, a correspondence as well shoot Ooh. go right I mean it's Colin again oh Colin <laughs> <laughs> okay. hi Colin He's not happy. Oh, okay. oh I didn't think he'd be uh, happy right. about Predators. Bye, yeah. Colin. Go. go. Um, I have to paraphrase this because it's a bloody long email. <laughs> He's, I don't know who he thinks he is <laughs> writing these things. Uh, I enjoy your differences in opinion and the different styles of science fiction you all enjoy. However, shots have been fired, so retaliation is the only option I have. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what he's referring to. What are the shots yeah. you fired at him? Don't I don't know, know what we said. Um, no, we haven't, we oh, haven't actually, said anything say, got bad you... about him for a while. Yeah, I was no, going to say, you, you, were too busy, you were too busy getting, like, slagging off Australians in the Yakuza, Chris, so I don't know when you yeah, have time for Colin. Oh, that was brilliant. Have you, did you see this, <laughs> yeah. that, was that? that comment? I don't know. Yakuza John or something. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it was. If listeners don't understand, basically, Chris, uh, during the Predators <laughs> episode, was a little bit rude about Yakuza, and then we got a comment in Japanese on our, uh, what did it say? The Yakuza see all and hear all. <laughs> see all and hear all, yeah. <laughs> He's a John. Yeah, so Colin's email is basically he's basically defending predators. I'm not going to read this. It's really Colin. Not... I liked predators, but I just couldn't uh, be bothered to argue with the other two. Uh, right, but here's, here's, here's his problem at the end. So, what's the ranking? Alex said twenty odd. Sam said about seventy ish. Then Chris said eighty odd, and it was put straight to the bottom <laughs> ranking of the three. Because I made a good <laughs> argument. That was what yeah, happens no. to comp. What happens to compromise you usually do? And no. this isn't the first time you guys have bullied Alex into submission. Oh, that, well, Colin, all I would say is that I realised that my... I loved Predators, but I love the Predator as a character, and I realised that that isn't really enough to make it a higher ranking. <laughs> it's yeah. like if... It, I just love that character. I love watching that character, but it, it isn't a great film. Sorry. No, it isn't. It uh, isn't. Probably. But I can still enjoy it. Maybe me and you, Colin, can team up and have a Predator man- marathon sometime. I think you predator guys really system. like the Predator. Yeah. 
go check yeah, it yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. We should go out and see the Predator. Yeah. I'm going to see it tomorrow night, so I'll report back next good. week. Mm. Very good. Um, if, if you're interested the, the week, day I'm Or the week after, Sam. Maybe the week after. Oh, yes. Good thinking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He says, uh, the day I'm criticised for my film preference by someone who adores Teletubbies from Space like it's a proper film is the day AVP Requiem tops the list. Um, he was referring to Muppets from Space there, Tell- I think. Yeah. Teletubbies from Which is, Space. Yeah, he means Muppets. Right. Uh, cl- clearly a better film than Predators. <laughs> he's, he's on glue. <laughs> well, thanks, Colin. Uh, yeah, bro. That's, that's all the correspondence. Yeah. Apart from the Yakuza, calling out Chris. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> cool. cool. All right, then. Well, it's a uh, good day for me. It- it's good night for me. Good day. Good afternoon for me. Okay. Bye. Cheerio, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.